I remember a time when I always experienced burnout and I was constantly getting frustrated over every little thing and I didn't know how to break free from that. And ironically, it was a time when I had a lot less responsibilities than I do now. And it's been a few years now and I've picked up a few um, principles and tools on how to recognize that I'm about to head for a burnout and how to avoid it. So today, that's exactly what I want to talk to you about is how to recognize you're heading for a burnout and how to avoid it. I'm Sahar, this is 310, and let's get into it. So as I was saying, I had a time in my life where I experienced burnout very frequently, and it was actually a time early on in our marriage. Uh, we had been married for a year, I believe, and I had just quit my job because I felt the Lord was calling me to full-time ministry, and it was something that was on my heart, so it wasn't like it was something I didn't want to do. I was very excited about it, and that's exactly what I wanted to do. And so I quit my nine to five, and I went into full-time ministry with my husband, Andrew. And it wasn't long after that, that I began to experience serious burnout. And it was just to do with ministry. Ministry is not for the faint of heart. You know, there's a lot of needs. There's, you're working with all sorts of different people and people come with different issues. And so I found it very, very difficult to cope. And I was crashing very, very often. Now with hindsight, I've come to realize that burnout is actually a sign that you're tapping into your own strength and not drawing from the Holy Spirit, who is the living water that's living inside of you, where we're supposed to draw all our strength from as Christians, as believers. Now, I know sometimes burnout can actually also be legitimate in, in the sense of you are actually doing too much, but I do believe that it's the former more so that causes us to feel like we're exhausted and frustrated as opposed to it being physically us doing too many things. So I wanted to get straight into it and share with you 10 tips or principles on how to avoid burnout. Point number one, Isaiah 40, 31 says, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. You need to number one, number one, number one is spend time with God. This is like elementary stuff. If you didn't know this, um, now you do, but if you've been walking with the Lord for a while, you should know that s spending time with God is key. He is strong when we are weak. He's the source of our strength. Uh, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He also says that his burden is light and his yoke is easy. So make sure that you spend time with God. Point number two, remember your why. Write the vision down and set it before you. That's what the scriptures also tell us. You have to remember why you're doing what you're doing. Um, if it's something that God has told you to do, if it's say you started a degree or a course or a project, put the finished um, result or end result before you and remind yourself why you're doing this. Usually we forget when we get in the, uh, in the midst of things and when things get tough, we just get bogged down in the mess. Uh, but we have to remind ourselves that if we press on, if we keep on going forward, we are going to bear fruit and we're going to see the result of why we started in the first place. So remember your why. Point number three, focus on the positive or focus on what God is doing or look at the progress that is actually happening. This is something that I personally struggled with for many years. Um, I would always see what is not happening or what needs to be done and everything that has happened all the good stuff all the positive things i just had this ability of deleting everything and just focusing on the negative all the time or focusing on the needs that need to be met and that is a recipe for burnout and it doesn't even matter how much or how often you pray if you don't change your mindset and your perspective and focusing on what god is doing in the situation you're in um, you're always going to be frustrated uh, with life, with people, and you're just never going to find true joy and peace and contentment where you are right now. So focus on the positive, focus on what God is doing. Point number four. First Corinthians 5.10 says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. 
You need to trust in God's finished work. What do I mean by that? <clears throat> Is everything that you're doing, are, are you kind of trying to reinvent the wheel? Are you digging your own path? Or are you aligning yourself with what God um, has already done in your life? Um, and working that out, walking that out. Um, God has a path and a destiny for each and every single one of us, which is called God's will for our life. And are you tapping into that? Are you aligning yourself with what God is saying? Or are you doing something that's just your own thing and you haven't consulted Him about it? Because whenever we do that and we try to live our lives away from God, it's us trying to, to dig our own path. When God says, there's already a beaten path for you that I've created before the foundations of the earth. So can you please walk in it and walk, and I'll walk with you in this journey. I love this scripture in 1 Corinthians because it's Paul talking about the grace of God. And sometimes we think that the grace of God means everything's going to be easy and we don't have to do anything. But I love this scripture because he says, I worked harder than most people but by the grace of God. So just because you have the grace of God isn't an excuse for us to be lazy. There is work to be done, but it's not work of the flesh, of our own will. It's the work of the finished work of Christ on the cross, what He's already planned for us, His will for our lives. You will find that God empowers that and He will walk you through that. So trust in God's finished work for your life. Point number five, make sure to take time out to do self-care, to look after yourself, to rest. Um, and because and this is so important because if you don't do this you are gonna end up quitting and we don't want that and the reason why it's important for you to take time out is because if you don't if you just keep going and going and going you're gonna crash and you're gonna want to quit and we don't want that nobody wants that uh, that's not a good idea we don't want to quit we want to keep going but it's important to recognize and introduce times in your day in your week to make sure that you stop you take a break and you rest because we weren't wired to just keep working and to just keep going. Something will go wrong with your health, with your mental health. Uh, you will just burn out or eventually you will just quit what you're doing because you didn't take the time out to rest. So make sure that you do that. Point number six, we work from rest and not rest from work. What do I mean by that? Um, I'm totally going to plagiarize. Uh, pastor Lincoln, who's my senior pastor, um, preached an amazing sermon um, a few weeks ago, and I loved the point that he made about Adam. Uh, in Genesis chapter 2, you will find that after God creates the whole earth, the world, and everything that's in it, on the sixth day he creates man, and then on the seventh day he rested. And so the first day um, after man's creation was a day of rest. And why does God do it that way? Because he wants us to understand a principle is that we are first created in rest. Um, we, we, we are to work from rest. We are to work from our connection and our intimacy with God. That's where we get our strength from. We don't work um, from our own strength and then rest from that. Um, by us resting first, we're saying, I recognize that I need God first and I need to align myself with Him first, draw my strength from Him first, and then go out and do what I've been commissioned to do. So make sure that you work from rest. Point number seven, prioritize. Now, I'm also preaching to myself, but you need to understand sometimes that you are doing too much. Uh, I don't know if you're anything like me, if you're someone who gets very excited and passionate and you just want to have your hand in everything. Um, this point is for you. You can't have everything. You can't do everything at the same time. Um, and sometime if you spread yourself too thin, you're just not going to be effective and you're not going to do anything productive because you don't have the energy to. So make sure that you prayerfully consider this. What do you need to cut back and what do you need to prioritize? and basically um, put put that first and put it into action. So make sure you prioritize. Point number eight, if there's something funky, then engage. I love this quote by Bill Hybels, who uh, used to be the senior pastor of Willow Creek Church. The point is that I'm trying to make is, if there's something funky, if there's something within relationships, um, or I feel like it's a principle that applies in any area of, of your life. If you feel like there's something that you're looking and you're like, that doesn't quite 
feel right or there's something wrong there or with your relationships personal relationship there's something wrong and you feel like you're walking on eggshells that can cr create stress and cause you to burn out as well and you need to make sure that if that does happen engage address the issue full on don't walk on eggshells around it just address it full on so if there's something funky make sure you engage point number nine you are not the messiah what do I mean by that? Um, a lot of times we as Christians have this thing called the Messiah complex, which is we really think that we have all of the answers to the world's problems. Uh, we have them at our fingertips and we are the world's solution to everything. And we're not. The Lord is, but we're not. And so with that comes um, sometimes an unhealthy way of how you carry things. I remember I had this issue when I used to be a youth pastor. Uh, being a youth pastor in, in London, in cities like London, can be extremely challenging because you're dealing with young people who are going through a lot. And I remember I just used to come back home crying all the time because of I just couldn't believe the things that the young people were going through. And I had to learn after a while that, no, 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 I'm not supposed to carry this the way I'm carrying it. It's not healthy for me. I am not Jesus. I'm not their savior. I'm not going to die on the cross for them because Jesus already did that. Um, what I need to do is lay these burdens and give them all to Jesus and lay them at his feet and pray and give it to him and leave it there. And so if you're someone that carries people, if you're someone who um, you naturally nurture people or you lead people, you'll find that that can be a trap that you fall into. You need to learn to let it go. Let it go, let it go. So make sure that you leave your burdens with Jesus and you don't carry them in an unhealthy way. And finally, point number 10. And whatever you do, don't quit, especially if you're doing something that the Lord has led you to do. Um, do not be discouraged, keep on going, because His power is made perfect in our weakness. It's okay not to have it together, it's okay to have down times, but it's not okay for us to not bring it to the Lord and for us to think that we have the strength to do it. And I just wanna finish off with this scripture, um, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 till 10. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So just know this today that if you are feeling weak, um, that's when he is made strong and that's when his power is perfected in you and people can actually experience the true power of Christ when you're feeling like this. So rejoice, it's okay. I hope you found this helpful today and I just wanna know what points or what actions you're gonna take after watching today's video. Leave them in the comment box below and as always, make sure to like, share, subscribe and until next time, bye for now. Oh,